This conference will now be recorded. Hey everyone, this is Jody Collado with Wellspring Solutions. I hope that you are doing well. Today we are going to be talking about making a backup plan, which is especially important, you know, during these times. We are um, all faced with unexpected situations, but as a family caregiver, uh, situations can happen without warning. And when you feel um, without a plan or unprepared or without options, without people you can rely on, um, it can become very stressful. And we certainly don't need more stress. And, you know, it's important to think about the what ifs, you know, the scenarios where you might be needing a backup plan. And if you have thought about um, the what ifs, you probably did not think about a pandemic. And during COVID-19, opportunities are more limited for resources and help. So it's really important that you revisit plans that you may have made uh, in the past or that you go ahead and develop a plan now. And just think that, you know, when you develop a plan, it's not about asking someone, maybe you could help me in the future if I need a hand. It's about being specific. So um, while I have you here, let's talk a little bit about uh, our services at Wellspring Solutions. We offer a full slate of home and community-based services for older adults in Guilford County. And part of making a backup plan is, um, you know, researching your local um, resources and those in the community. So we offer um, our memory screenings, uh, memory fitness, dementia dialogues. Those are classes that um, can help with understanding um, the dementia process and communication. We have our memory care center and connections, a memory club. We have four locations and those are group respite. Uh, caregiver education and support, which of course we're doing virtually now. We have home care operating and we also have our navigator, Nicole, who can help you um, if you are just not sure what services would benefit you. And we also have our phone number here as well as our website. But let's go ahead and talk about, you know, why a plan is even important. Well, if you are in a panic or in a crisis, you come across, you know, being sick and um, you really need to make decisions when you're calm and when you're well and not rushed. Because if you are sick, you know, mobilizing care and um, thinking about coordinating um, care is going to be very difficult. So, of course, it's also going to reduce your worry and stress, knowing that a system is in place if one of those what ifs happen, if you get sick, if you need to quarantine. Um, it helps people who uh, you have asked for help uh, to be uh, prepared and it makes them feel involved. And then, of course, those assuming care will better understand um, what you're asking of them, what your loved one's needs are, and they'll better understand their role. So not only is it important to be specific with your plan, you need to share the plan so that you can kind of get a commitment from those that um, you ask for help. So let's talk about establishing and sharing that plan. So thinking about really who can you call um, on a moment's notice. Now we're not talking necessarily about someone who's going to be you, but someone who can step in uh, into your shoes. Someone who can maybe make decisions, they can actually provide the care that your loved one needs, or they can coordinate the care. So this needs to be someone who has perhaps some knowledge of your loved one's um, illness, if they have dementia, they need to be comfortable coming um, perhaps into your home and, and helping with those strategies and um, they need to feel like it's like they have a handle on the situation. And they also need to be, um, if you know, your loved one requires any specific special needs, they might need to have a, a skill set. So it's just very important that you think about who can you call on on a moment's notice. And it can also be um, that you want to call someone who, um, you know, is a family or friend that can just stop by. But we'll talk about that a little bit more further. So also you want to organize um, important information and we'll talk about that. Preparing a health information sheet. So that's gonna include uh, your loved ones, you know, diagnoses, et cetera. Uh, as I talked about, you want to research community resources, and you also want to look at the technology that can help you to stay organized and that can help you stay connected. So as I said, you know, who can be your backup? Who can support you uh, in an emergency? That's really the important part of all this. Who do you feel you can trust? Who um, feels that they can commit to helping you if there's an emergency? 
And you might also want to think up, you know, who's going to be the backup for your backup? Who's going to be the second contact? And again, is there a neighbor or a friend, someone who, you know, might not be able to provide that hands-on care, but can you ask them maybe to run an errand for you? Could they deliver a meal? Could they pick up and drop off unneeded medications or supplies? So you just really want to think about who's going to be your backup, and then they also need to be accepting of that role. So organizing important information. Um, so basically important personal contacts. You want to have at the ready the you know names and phone numbers, um, email addresses, and all of that, so that you can contact um, folks. And then also if you have someone who is your backup, they know who to contact as well. They don't have to you know wonder who um, you have named to help you. The important medical and professional contacts, um, you know, physicians, um, home care agencies, uh, attorneys with legal and financial contacts, um, insurance information, uh, making sure you know where advanced directives are, um, and house and utilities. Um, I'm going to share with you this website. It's careforagingparents.com, and they have um, a caregiver organizer. So if you go to careforagingparents.com, I'm going to take you here, you download the caregivers organizer. There's probably many that you can choose from on the internet, but this basically gives you like a guideline. And it also suggests here that you um, put copies of some of the pages into a storage device like Dropbox. And if someone doesn't have that ability, it's just important that you keep sh make sure that it's updated and that you share it electronically or you um, print out the pages and make sure that your uh, backup has a safe place for it. So I just thought I would show you some of the items here. Again, it's just a guideline, but this is um, a place for you to put all the main information and then it also has a lengthy list here about things that you might want to have um, at the ready like um, any powers of attorney information, advanced directives, you know, combinations to a safe, maybe where all the important paperwork is kept, um, tax return information, insurance information, and then as we tab down there's some ID cards, some more ID cards. And then here's where you're gonna put medical information, medications, uh, dispensing the medication, the medical contacts, you know, maybe there's a therapist, the pharmacies here, uh, the dentists, and so on. So this just is an opportunity for you to get a guide um, on some of the things that you might want to be organized about. So, There it is, the careforagingparents.com. Okay, so as we talk about organizing health information, it's just important that you think about um, getting the current medication and doses is, if your loved one has any allergies or dietary issues, any food intolerances, any allergies um, to food, if they use any assistive devices, if they have a walker, if they use um, a hearing aid, if they have glasses, these are all things that it's just important for your backup to be aware of. And you may also want to just establish um, just something that just shows maybe what a typical day is in the life of your loved one. Um, are they better off in the, in the morning? Are they more alert? If they have dementia, there might be strategies that you want to share um, so that your backup knows what works. Okay, so again, um, you know, you can use that uh, checklist that I shared with you, but also there are apps, um, technology platforms and tools that can help you stay organized. And I don't have all of um, different apps suggested, but you can certainly explore some of these options. There are med reminder um, apps. There are um, those that promote home safety. You might even want to look at a uh, personal emergency response system. Um, that is a way to um, basically call for help in an emergency and um, it's programmed to emergency response center. So that's something that you might want to look into if you're worried about maybe your loved one lives at home by themselves, but you're worried about their safety. There are uh, apps that will help with organizing caregiving tasks. Um, lots of Helping Hands is a very popular one. Uh, 
sharing information. You know, if you want to look at personal health records being shared, um, there are websites and apps that will help you do that. And they can include, you know, patient history and you basically determine who you want to share that information with. And also, you know, to stay connected, thinking about online support groups, um, there's blogs, there's ways to um, get virtual support during this time because it is very stressful and you might find that there are other people who have um, you know, formulate a backup plan and you can get some suggestions from them. We offer uh, three caregiver support groups on a virtual basis um, a month. So that is on our website if that is something you would be interested in. Also, staying connected and thinking about uh, making your plan at this time as we um, need to be physical distancing, you might look to Skype or FaceTime or Zoom. Maybe you want to organize a family meeting so that you can bring in your loved one's um, skill sets, any family members that are friends or neighbors that have uh, resources or ideas so that you can have a successful contingency to your backup plan. Okay, well, I hope that this was helpful for you. Um, and lastly, I'm just putting this on the screen. Our caregiver support program is funded through the Family Caregiver Support Program of the Older Americans Act, which requires that we give our viewers an opportunity to contribute to the cost of our programming. So please know that any contribution is completely voluntary and greatly appreciated as it just expands the program to additional caregivers. Any contribution, again, is voluntary kept confidential and here on the screen is where you can direct any um, questions or your contribution. So please um, stay in touch if you have any questions. I hope you continue to be in good spirits and stay well. And thanks for watching.